Hello, my name is Bridget Morris, and I'm a member of the International Taekwondo Federation's Women's Committee. And this year for International Women's Day, we wanted to do something different and a little special. So we are going to be doing interviews with ITF women that we think are very inspiring. So today on our first guest, we have ITF board member, Master Anik Avendrissa. Welcome. Hello, Brigitte. It's an honor to be here with you today. Yes, it's an honor to have you here. So uh, let's get started. So you've been a board member for almost four years now. How has your experience been so far? Um, it's been a great experience, you know. Um, when Grandmaster Weiler asked me a couple of years ago if I wanted to present myself as a candidate for the elections in Enzo, you know, I, I had to think about it because it was really never my ambition to be in that position but um it was very persuasive and then i wanted to help ITF and its members and you know my sense of responsibility is is too big since we've seen that yeah there were a lot of uh, of mistakes in the past um i wanted to change things and to help change things and i, I think we managed it uh, we have done a lot of work. We had some great accomplishments. Still, a lot has to be done, but well, we've we've done great. I think over the last couple of years, so I have a, a nice feeling about that. That's really good to hear. Um, well, I mean, you've been one of the first women to be on the board. I mean, this is a big moment in history. Do you think that your presence as a woman on the board has changed things, and why? Yeah, probably some small things, you know, as as women, we tend to see things in a little bit another perspective, maybe um, not that the, the males and the board are macho, but still we have a softer um, way of approaching things. So I believe um, it was good to have some softer hands around, yeah. That's really good. Um, so, I mean, you were just before that you were talking about the board accomplishing a lot of, of things. I mean, you guys have been really busy and I know that. So as a board member, what is something that you have accomplished that was important to you? What was really important to me was the ITF policy on harassment, um, not only to protect our female members, but also male members. And when I heard the the feedback after publishing the, the policy, it was great and, and there really was a need on this. And then on the other hand, I'm also really proud on the ITF Women's Committee we established because when I see the work you're doing, wow, that's, that's fantastic. Well, you've been working a lot with us and uh, actually going back on that sexual harassment policy, I know that you were very much involved in the drafting and uh, even the creating the campaign. How do you think that's going? Because we were in there in Slovenia together and that was the first time that the campaign was launched on uh, at a world event. So how do you think that's going so far? It's going good because, you know, by now people dare to speak out. Um, before this, it's, it's not that the problem is bigger now, but people, they know they can come out with problems and they, they can't speak about it. So it's, it's a big accomplishment, I think. Do you think that it makes it where we're more approachable? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And people also know now that ITF is, uh, has a zero tolerance against harassment. Yeah, I think that that's uh, a very strong statement. Um, and um, from what I can understand, not it's not just yourself, the entire board uh, are all behind this as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely, 100%, yeah. That's amazing. Um, and it has changed a lot. I know that, uh, well, I've heard that um, people have started to express themselves, reaching out, whether it's by email or just messages. Um, so how do you feel about that? Just people starting to open up. It's good to know that people know we are approachable. People come to us, they talk about it, they send us emails, they send us messages. So it's great to know that 
people know we are not out there in an ivory tower, but they can come to us. So that's well, ITF is there for its members. We are all ITF. So people know they can come to, to the board, to you as women committee. So that's good. Yeah. I, I remember you in Slovenia walking around uh it, you know, not just staying in the VIP section, actually walking around on the floor, and and you were just talking to to everybody, and a lot of people were coming up to you, and and um, I thought that was actually very special. That that was again going on the theme of approachability and and relatability. So that was fantastic. Yeah, well, um, we can never forget where we started. You know, we all started as a white belt. We all started there on the floor, and all of us grew level by level. So. Nobody is born as a seventh degree or as a board member. Yeah. That is very true. We are uh, we all learned a lot on our way there, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I know that you're very busy with the board, but you're also uh, a member of the All Europe Taekwondo Federation Women's Committee, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> how do you think your role? is different as a women's committee member and a board member? Um, as the, the chairperson of the ATF Women Committee, um, it's my task, my duty to set up actions, campaigns, uh, together with the team members to, to do things um, for that women committee only. Um, while in the board, well, yeah, you have a lot of, of, of tasks to do, a lot of duties to do. Um, like being a bit of a liaison between US Women Committee and, and the rest of the board. So it's um, it's more narrow, but you can maybe we have a, a bigger impact on 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 the women um, on the floor. It's yeah, I think I have a bigger impact there for those women. That's that's amazing. I mean, you're talking about campaigns, and um, if you're if you go on the uh, ITF Europe IG, you're going to see a lot of posts made by the uh, Women's Committee, and these stories are actually really incredible. Um, they talk about topics like work life balance or taekwondo training after tra childbirth, IVF tra uh, treatment, and like even after menopause training. Why do you think it's important to be sharing those stories? When we started with the um, Women Committee and, and Europe, the first thing we did was having a survey. What do the women in Europe need? Uh, what do they want? And one of those things was, well, we need more information um, and we need more role models. So information on what? Well, how can we train when we ha have our monthly period? How can we train when we are pregnant or just after childbirth and so on and so on? So it was important to, to feed those women with that information. Um, just the same as having those posts of, of women, known women, but also, yeah, other women that people don't tend to know. Why are you doing Taekwondo? How are you doing with the combination with, with your work balance, your your family life and so on. So it was um, it was a question from the women itself. That's it's why we did it. I think that's fantastic um, being able to fulfill a need that is asked for. Um, mm -hmm. I was reading some of those and you actually contribute a lot to those stories uh, with your experience and um, and I, I feel as though it's may not it may not be um, easy to come forward and talking about some of these topics because they're maybe considered taboo or, or just we don't talk about it. So how do you feel uh, when you talk about something like that? I don't, for me, my, for myself, it's not that hard to talk about it um, because I don't really have any problems or I didn't feel like having problems. For some women, well, it's very brave to come forward, uh, like the story we, we had on the IVF, for example. It was a, a really brave story. Um, but those women have the feeling that they have to do it because 
they can help others, they can help other women by contributing like this. Do you so, find that after opening up the discussion on some of these topics that more women are coming forward with either their own stories or a different type of story that could be related in terms of um, in terms of like Taekwondo? Yeah, both, both. Uh, a lot of women want to tell their story now, say I had the same or I have a similar thing. But I also get some reactions of uh, women. So yeah, well, I also have a story and reading the other stories, it would be nice if I could tell the others how I am feeling or what I was doing. So it's it's opening up something and, and things are rolling now. And, uh, and it's not only important to, to female uh, practitioners because we had a lot of reactions from male instructors saying, now I understand what the women in my class are are asking or are, are yeah are expecting from me so it's important for for all of our members yeah i remember you had said at one point that um not only is it good to receive feedback from women but we also need the support and the feedback from men so you are hearing uh feedback from men for yeah. for these stories yeah yeah we got uh, a lot of positive reactions from uh, male instructors absolutely yeah i think that's so glad. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely good. yeah i never expected it you know um but seeing the impact on on all of our members yeah, it's 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 a great feeling it is because I guess this is what we do, um, you know, specifically yourself being involved on so many different levels. It's like you are serving your members, just like you said. So yeah. you are getting that feedback. Yeah, absolutely. So being on that women's committee, um, apart from the stories, uh, what is one of the goals that you would that you would like to achieve um, in the next few years? Ooh, we still have a lot of goals. We still have to change a lot of things. Um, let's say that the, the main goal would be, maybe not in the next four years, but over time, um, that there will one be no need to have an ITF Women's Committee. Maybe it's, it's too positive for me, but in the end, that should be the goal. Uh, on the other hand, one of the goals would also be that ITF is becoming bigger, 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 bigger. Maybe have a reunification at a certain moment would also be a, a very good thing. But we we have a lot of goals, you know, still a lot of, uh, of things to be done. Yeah, There's always a long list. So, so why do you say that uh, eventually in the future you would like to not have the Women's Committee? Because people would know that... All of us are the same, all of us need to have the same chances, the same opportunities. It will not be there in four years, not in eight years, maybe not in 20 years. But in the end, it should be able to, or we should believe it's possible. Yet there is no difference in between our members, male or female or whatever gender they have. I guess we share the common goal of Taekwondo and yeah, improving. Absolutely. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, well, I mean, we did talk about you being very involved in the Women's Committee, the ITF, the global organization. Uh, I mean, you're practically in all of our meetings, and um, I'd say you're basically our number one cheerleader. <laughs> yeah, but it's only because it's fun being with with you as Women Committee. It's a great <laughs> bunch of of ladies, you know. Such a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I mean, we also have great, uh, great goals. And um, and you've always been um, kind of like a staple providing your feedback on events. And, um, you know, try one of our goals would be to highlight um, and or celebrate accomplishments of, of women. Um, and you're always there, you know, like supporting it. I mean, look at you here right now, supporting one of the things that we're doing. <laughs> Why do you think that's important yeah. for you? Um, one, there's that big sense of responsibility that's it's there throughout my life. Uh, two, 
as I said, you're just a great bunch of ladies to be with. Um, three, the IDF Women Committee is a new committee. It's one of the new committees. And we, we thought that it would be maybe easier to have a liaison between the committee and the board to get more comfortable. Maybe in the next period, this won't be the, there will be no need for that any, anyhow. When I see how you're working, there won't be any need. But yeah, I, I just want to get involved at all, in all of the, the big, great, fantastic things you're doing. So yeah, it's also something for myself, you know, oh. I just like it. Well, that's wonderful. Being part of something. I mean, if you really think yeah. about it, the you just you you being on the board, the first woman on the board, or the women's com uh, committee creation, whether it's the global organization or the all Europe Taekwondo Federation. I mean, these are all moments in history that we're paving. There's no there's no guidelines. We're creating the guidelines. So, how does that feel being a part of all of this? Yeah, I never thought about this. You know. Um, like in many things in, in my Taekwondo career, all these things happen by coincidence. And I never thought about it. Uh, there was never an ambition or a plan. Um, maybe in 10 years or in 20 years, I will think backwards and say, wow, that was a great achievement. But now we're just doing it. You know? yeah. Maybe the next generations will, will think otherwise than we do. That's, I mean, that's amazing. I was reading up your, um, some information that you had provided and going along the lines of, um, you know, things just happened and it kind of evolved into it. Um, so going on to your uh, empowering career, because you have had a career on so many different level. I mean, you've been the president of ITF Belgium for multiple times. You've been reelected. Uh, you've had a successful uh, competitor career, you've had a successful coaching career, and you've also had a successful umpiring career. So let's focus on that a little bit. So you were uh, basically a center, or sorry, you started umpiring in 1996. So basically you said you were like a color belt, maybe like a blue belt, red belt. And then the next year you were jury president. And then the following year you were sent a referee. I mean, that is like a really quick progression. If you ask me, how did it had to happen? Like what, like, what did you do? <laughs> uh, well, it's, I think it's, um, it's like this when you're part of a smaller club and a smaller federation. You know, when as a colored belt, I did my first national umpire course because I had to, we needed umpires. And I combined being competitor and coach, and then I combined being competitor and a referee, being a center referee at first. And then they thought, well, maybe she would be able to be jury president. So I became jury president. And, and, and sometimes I even switched from jury president to corner referee. And then I had to compete. And then I went back to corner referee and to, to jury president again. And then on one of the Belgian championships, I think, uh, should be 1998, 1999, I'm not sure. It must have been first or second degree. The, the tournament committee, the umpire committee said, oh, we're lacking one center referee. Well, you know, I can try. I've never done it, but I can try. I liked it. There were no complaints. So this was my <laughs> new duty from then on. Yeah. Oh, and wow. Then, yeah, oh, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, it is, it is. And then when I when I quit um, competition at uh, international level, uh, when I quit the national team, I think my last competition was 2002 the European Championships. And then in 2003, I became um, a, a corner referee at the European Championships. And one year later, there was the Junior World Championships in uh, Rimini. And somebody said, well, you know, She's a good center referee. And then they put me the there. good. <laughs> yeah. Just like this. I never quit. Yeah. Well, that's a good reputation to have. You're the good ref center referee. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, everything happened by coincidence. I never asked for something or, yeah. That's incredible. It just happened. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I mean, this is my opinion. 
But I feel that um, being an umpire can be a little intimidating. So how did you get started? Like, I mean, you just explained your progression, but like, it was just like, let's just try it. Like, where did you get this confidence to say, yeah, let's just try it. Cause I mean, it, it can be intimidating. I don't know, you know, I used to be very shy. Nobody believes it, but I was very shy before I started with Taekwondo. Uh, being an instructor helped me a lot and um, and changing the image I had for myself. But I don't know. I, I just thought, let's give it a try. We'll see. I have a, a voice, you know, a loud voice. And I liked that when two competitors were quite bigger than, than me and they had to listen. <laughs> I like the atmosphere being a competitor myself. I like the atmosphere of being in between them, having contact with them, having contact with the coaches, um, being responsible for their safety too, because as a competitor, I knew how important it was. And then also working together with, with your ring council. You know, being an, an umpire, it's, it's a hard job for one day, two days, three days. But if you can do it with, with that whole ring council, with that whole team, that's, yeah, it's nice. It's a great feeling. Yeah, that's amazing you say that because I feel, I feel like the, the, I guess, nervousness or the intimidation factor, you've just basically like blew that out of the water by saying, you know, all the positive things about that. So that's beautiful. So, I mean, if there's a girl or a woman out there that is just a little bit intimidated on wanting to be an umpire, what, what would you say to them? Just do it. Try it. You know, the respect you get from those competitors, it's it's so big. And, you know, in the beginning, sometimes I had the feeling, well, they see that little girl there, one, one meter 60, and they think, well, maybe we should be a little bit um, careful with her. I don't know, maybe they, they saw it that way. But I, I never had the feeling that competitors looked at me like, what the hell is she doing here? No, just <laughs> if you want to give it a try as, as, as an umpire, as a, as a center referee, just do it. Just give it a try. <laughs> I love it. Just do it. This is not yeah. sponsored by Nike, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. I mean, I actually have a question for you. So women are uh, a minority in martial arts. And I'd say even more so when it comes to umpiring. Um, do you feel that you have an advantage and or disadvantage being an umpire as a woman? I never felt this way. I never felt being a woman in between the other umpires. Um, I was one of the umpires of the team. The fact that we have um, less umpires um, although it's changing, when I saw the last championships, I see a, a big number of, uh, of female buyers. But the thing is, still today, it's it's a society problem. Uh, women are the first ones that stay at home because of the children, because of the work, and uh, whatever. It's it's not my opinion. It's an ITF problem or a problem from the umpire committee. Uh, don't think they see it as that's a woman we will not use her as an umpire it's just that women tend to go less abroad to be part of the team mm -hmm. so we still have a little bit of work and changing society yeah well there's still room for uh for growth so absolutely yeah we'll still need you <laughs> <laughs> and others a lot of people are coming a lot of women are coming um, so, I mean, we've been talking about your accomplishments and I kind of want to highlight something because, um, you were recently nominated and won, um, a sports achievement award <laughs> yeah. in, for your recognition in your Taekwondo career, Taekwondo life, um, in the Sinti, is it, a uh, look it in? Yeah. It's so yeah. first of all, your hometown, well, congratulations, yeah. first Thank of you. all. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Oh, um, yeah, well, some of my assistant instructors um, did something behind my back, and I think you were also part of it. 
so they nominated Maybe. me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they nominated me um, together with the Grandmaster Van Bergen. <laughs> Sorry, but the lifetime lifetime achievement. Were you the only? Well, what were the other um, candidates? Uh, I guess achieved like what? Was it, were they all taekwondo or were they other other sports? You know, other sports. It's um, we have a yearly gala here in, in Lokeren for all of the the sports clubs and the sports uh, people. Um, there were five nominees, I believe: um, athletics, um, football, handball, taekwondo. I don't know the fifth anymore. Um, but they were quite impressed because yeah, we put Lokeren and, and Belgium on the map on and the international scene. So they were they were quite proud also because yeah, we're only a small city, you know, we have 48,000 people here, uh, but a lot of sports people. And they were quite proud that uh, somebody from here could could achieve those things. That's really incredible, the reach that you, the reach and the impact that uh, you have had, and I'm sure that you will still have for many, many years. So yeah, I would, it would be something to be proud of for sure. One of the, let's, I guess, let's go back a little bit more, um, talking about your, your achievements, um, because I guess this is one of the questions that most people get asked. So like, how did you get started in Taekwondo? You're saying that your city was full of sports. So what made you decide ITF Taekwondo as opposed to anything else? Ooh, also, that is a, a, a difficult question. You know, I was always uh, interested in martial arts. And I was born in, in 1976. So I'm from the generation of Karate Kid and blood sport, Jean-Claude Van Damme, those things. So, you know, in the garden, I tried some some stuff, but at that time here in the, in the city, you only had judo, aikido, and shotokan karate. I didn't really like judo or aikido, and for whatever reason, I never took the step to go to the karate club. Uh, I don't know why. Today I'm I'm happy because I don't think it would have suited me. Uh, I'm not that big and and I'm not that powerful. And it's it's very static, you know, while I like to to move a lot. So I did a lot of, of other sports because I'm, I'm really interested in sports. I still am today. And then at a certain moment, I was 17, uh, nearly 18, uh, my last year of high school. And I saw a poster of a new Taekwondo club um, who were having their dojang in our school. So I, um, I went to watch uh, one of the classes. Uh, the next class I, I started, I asked if I could uh, join the class and I never quit. Um, yeah, people ask me why, because you like sports, why Taekwondo? Let's say that I think, yes, I like sports, but I love Taekwondo and I'm passionate about it. And I don't know why, it's, it's the feeling, you know, it's, it's like a virus uh, in my body and my mind. <laughs> it's the first thing I, I think about when I wake up and it's the last thing I think about when I go to sleep. Uh, but I cannot explain why. Um, yeah. It's just like this. I don't know why. Yeah. I was going to I was gonna ask you, uh, but I, I think you kind of answered that. So I was like, you know, we all have our own reason to continue Taekwondo. Sometimes it's therapy. Sometimes it's just get away from the kids. Um, <laughs> what What is your reason? You know, maybe it, it's that feeling. It's that virus feeling. <laughs> it's that virus feeling. Yes, it's it's a passion, you know. Um, even when, you know, all of us, we have our problems from time to time. Um, but every time I put on my dobok and I walk into the dojang, I forget everything for an hour, for two hours, everything is gone. And I go back home and I'm like another person, you know, and maybe the next day the problem is there again, but it, it's something that makes me forget the rest of the world. And I don't have that same feeling with other sports. So 
Yeah, it, it's a way of life, you know. It's it's the door of uh, of Taekwondo, also I believe. So I don't want to be cutting this short because I'm having so much fun, but um, I do want to make a quick comment in theme to um, you know celebrating International Women's Day. I see that you're wearing your silk scarf and I am as well. Oh, yes. And I do have to say that I pretty much see you wearing that silk scarf in every single picture, except the ones that you're in Dobok or that it's if your cat. So why <laughs> is it, why is it important for you to be uh, wearing that scarf? Um, you know, a tie, yeah, we always have a tie when, or we had a tie when we went to, um, congresses and, and other formal uh, activities or as an umpire and then uh, the feeling is it's not not the same it it hurts from time to time and people look at you like what the hell a female she's wearing a tie and then those scarves were there it was like wow finally something that is female because Let's face it, the do box are the same, male, female, the male and female, but we are not really the same. Um, our body is a little bit different. So um, for me, it was a, a, a present to, to have this scarf. And you can wear it in all kinds of, of, of things. You can change it from time to time. It's not just that tie. You can wear it however you want. When it's cold, it gives you a little bit of, of warmth. And when it's warm, it can still help. It gives you that, that isolation feeling. So, no, it's, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Well, you wear it very you well. make it official. Yeah. Well, yeah. maybe we'll work on that. Maybe that'll be a project that uh, the Women's Committee can work together. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you heard here first. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, before we go, um, is there anything, words of wisdom that you'd like to share to any young girls, ITF girls, women out there uh, that are starting, just starting their Taekwondo journey? Yeah. Keep on going. Try to have that confidence, that self-confidence. Know that you're able to, de to do a lot more than you believe you can do, but take it step by step. You know, as a white belt, take a look at yellow belts. And as a yellow belt, you can look to green belt. So step by step. But anything you want to achieve, you will be able to achieve. So just have that confidence. And for the rest, well, happy Women's Day to all of you out there. Uh, well, thank you so much. Well, um, <clears throat> sorry, on behalf of the uh, ITF, Women's Committee. Uh, thank you again for your time today. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you on a, a more personal level. Uh, I'd like to wish you and all of the ladies out there uh, a happy International Women's Day. So thank you again. Thank you. It was an honor.